everyone thank you for tuning in i am jay lee this is jay lee's corner this is our review for the real housewives of atlanta this is season 10 reunion part three baby 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 that goddamn kim look let me just lipstick up tonight as y'all see some of my hand already it is the lovely rihanna's fenty beauty y'all know this is my favorite if I could wear, I was going to wear this every day, every night. My mom was like, you need to get more lipsticks. Don't just wear one. So that's why I have so many now. But this is my absolute fave lipstick. As y'all see, I also redid my nails. And the color I chose was Slater Girl. It is a Sally Henson polish. Y'all know I do my own manicures. So y'all did that earlier as well. Um, this Let's get into this review. If y'all want... My mug is still available. The I'm Fat shirts are still available. The Detroit Winter Circle shirts are still available. It's all on the my uh, website. The link is in the description box below this video. The next shirt, the I'm Big shirts, will be out uh, by May 1st. Let's just say that. Um, I'm working on just getting the um, design fixed a little bit. So, you know, this part of the reunion, part three... I don't think it needed three parts of the reunion. Honestly, I did not. I thought part two was a little lackluster or whatever. I think they could have squoze, you know, some stuff in there. Some other parts that were a little bit boring did not have to be on there. Hell, Eva didn't have to be on there. Um, Marlo, yeah, she was okay. But, yeah, I, didn't, I don't think we needed three parts. But I'm so happy they, you know, addressed things the way they did, I guess. So, um... The episode starts off and we see Kim and Nene kind of going back and forth. Uh, just kind of yelling at each other. And I'm like, my mouth was so dry. Brock, I just did that damn review. Ugh, I just did a purse haul. So if y'all have not seen it, I have a purse haul up on my channel as well. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. They were going back and forth about the whole thing where Nene park, parking handicap and if Kim really said that she saw Nene, if Kim really took a picture herself, all this this rigmarole bullshit that is going back and forth and they're kind of going back and forth and Kim was saying how, oh, it was a joke, me saying that she, you know, parked and handicap. It was like a, how the fuck was it a joke? <laughs> And Nene was like, bitch, you the goddamn parking, the parking and forth. I'm like, what does it matter where I parked? I, you know, well, Greg has a handicap sticker and now with someone handicapped who also had one. So what does it matter? And I agree with Nene. Why do you care where I park at? Like, it doesn't make any sense for you to be so concerned that that becomes an, a storyline on a damn reality show. And so, Kim, like, well, because you took a parking space from a handicapped person. Honey, Nene said, well, bitch, where's your scooter? Like, do you need a scooter? All them diseases and ailments you had. Where's your scooter? Where is... I say, she gonna have a, a shirt tomorrow that says, where is your scooter? It was very fucking funny. I kept laughing because it's true. You have had all kind of stuff. You would probably have to have a scooter. If you didn't have a stroke, heart issues, you should have a handicap sticker because you you should be handicapped. I mean, and not even demean it in a derogatory mean in a derogatory way, meaning if someone has certain ailments, they handicapped. But in real life, you've had enough things going on in your life where you got you you should have a goddamn handicap sticker or goddamn scooter or wheelchair or what or whatever. A cane, I don't know what, but there's some things. So we see that whole situ the situation. You know, Sheree talk about her and Tyrone. She said her and Tyrone have been together for two years. So my this is my thing with Sheree. You've been dating this man in prison for two years. Why? For what? Like, what's the point? You know, Kim was saying how she felt like Sheree and Tyrone have been able to get, you know, closer and be, and be like, connect better because she's able to emotionally connect to him. You can't, in my opinion, emotionally connect to a person in prison um, simply because you don't know if it's real at all um he in prison boo he gonna have all the best words hi because everybody else in prison is saying the same thing she's today girls you cannot i do i my personal opinion is you cannot 
start or have a serious relationship with someone in prison because they're in prison. They don't have many fucking options. So for the most part, you know, whoever they're dealing with on the outside, if that's the person giving them time and attention, that's what they're going to focus all their attention on. You know, once that person comes home, it can, it can be a completely different situation. Now there are, are exceptions to every rule. And I understand that. But this Sheree and Tyrone situation ain't a goddamn exception. Look, Sheree needed a storyline. Sheree knew I'm going to be going back on the show. And she might have been talking to that man. She could have. But I feel like she amped it up um, to be a part of her storyline. I think she really thought that he was going to be getting out. But his ass is not. Um, you know, they asked her if she... I think a, a, a um, viewer wrote a question saying, you know, did Tyrone help pay for your house? And she said he did not. That is the house that Tyrone built. Tyrone built that whole goddamn basement, okay? My thing is, Shreya had no money to do nothing beforehand. All of a sudden, the, the, the past two years, okay, the past two years is when Shreya been putting in work into this house. When she got some money. You can't tell me that money ain't come from Tyrone. Tyrone ain't got to that girl head and she didn't took some money from, you can't tell me no different. You cannot. And... She said, you know, well, yeah, because they said, well, are y'all, like, engaged? And she says, no, not right now, but when he gets out, you know, we fully plan to get married and get, you know, get engaged and get married. Like every other prison person, that girl, you, is, look, Sheree, Tyrone ain't telling you nothing special, honey. That's the same thing every man in prison does. They say, I love you, girl. I want to be with you, girl. I want to marry you, girl. You know what I'm saying? When I come home, I'm going to build Dr. Man Cave. He then send you some money, and he said, well, do it yourself, okay? That's what the hell happened. You know, she says how... Um, you know, he's waiting for his, his appeal. Because Andy was a little bit petty. I love Andy. He's saying, you know, well, don't he got like four years left? And she's like, no, you know, technically, you know, if you have, if you, if you're sentenced to eight, no, if, if you're sentenced to 10 years, you have to do eight. So he'll be able to get out in two, even though he's sentenced to get out in four. And then she says, but you know, he's waiting on his appeal and that should be, you know, back any day now. Well, it came back, I think after the reunion was was filmed and his appeal was denied and he's going to be in jail for another four, like his, it, his release date, I think, is now is in twenty twenty two, four years from now. So she then said, "Well, if he loses the appeal, she would not wait the additional two years. Like, if he loses the appeal, we're not gonna be together." And I'm like, "Wait, you said how much you care for him? You love him, whatever?" She's like, "Yeah." They're like, "Well, are you like some other people?" Well, you know, I'm, I didn't stop my life. I'm still dating here and there. How you so so you unfaithful? He could be mad at you, girl. I think she and I think the only reason she said that was because she know her and Tyrone ain't real. So she know he ain't going to get out. I need to bring up something to get me on the show next season. So let me not make it seem as if, if he don't get out, that I have no storyline. Because if he don't get out, we're going to then talk about these other men I was dating while I was fucking with this man in prison. Straight by. I'm sure they got fired, so it doesn't really matter. Um, Kim and Nene go back at it. You know, Kim tried to insinuate uh, that Nene was dating married men. And, you know, I ain't here for it. You know what I'm saying? Because it was a whole thing where Kenya and Kim was kind of going back and forth. Because they was going back and forth because, um, I'm going to that probably. I'm not going to do that right now. So, no. Kim was saying how Greg was married when Nene met him. Nene called Bush like, bitch, when I met my husband in 96, you didn't even know him or me. So, how can you say who what he was doing when we, were, when we first met? And now I agree. Kim liked to say stuff to let's put it out of the atmosphere you she want to say stuff oh kim said this kim said that kim said this kim said that she says stuff so that people can believe what she's saying even if it isn't true it's then out in the atmosphere so nini car off real quick like bitch when i met my husband i didn't even know you you didn't know him so you can't tell me if he was married. She's like even if he was married when i met him me and him been married for 20 years so bitch that's none of what it doesn't even matter now she said however you dated two married men i said bitch two not just one it was another one bitch where you know she brings up how um, Big Papa still ain't divorced his wife, never divorced his wife. And Kim had the booboo face when Andy said, did he ever divorce his wife? And Kim, and then he was like, no. And she was like, uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. Bitch, you know. You know. When you was fucked with a married man who told you he was going to leave his wife for you, you know whether he left his wife or not. You Even if you even if you married again, that's one thing that you're aware of because you probably still, in one point or another, was pissed off that he did not divorce her. So, again, can be just saying shit to, you know what I'm saying, have it in the atmosphere. But Nene's saying, but you dated two married men. Kim is a nasty whore, okay? 
point blank to the period. If you dated two married men, I can't. Look, I don't care about a woman going out and having sex with no one. Be sexually fluid. Spread it wide. Do whatever you want to do. I do do not have respect for anyone who knowingly dates a married man. I get it if you did not know the man was married. If he lied and said he was not married and you just did, like you didn't know. We can't mess with that. But if you know this person's married and you know for a fact I can't even use his real name. I have to call him Big Papa because he got a whole wife. You ain't shit. You ain't shit. Your babies ain't going to be shit. Everything about you ain't going to be shit. And that's how I feel about Kim. Whatever. So, Nene then say, well, Kim was also a stripper for 20 years and that she um, danced as a nurse. I said, what? Kim kept saying a long time ago she was a, she was a nurse. So, was she a dancing nurse? <laughs> then they got nervous she was and what I liked not that I liked but I, what I noticed is little thing that it seems that Nene knew about Kim she was letting stuff slip she dated two married men she was dancing she was letting little stuff slip and you knew Nene wasn't lying because Kim kept back pull, back pulling pussy popping and was, whatever I, I, you don't what I, no it was a whole different thing and Kim kept trying to deflect from it all she was you're so loud you're yelling you can't be seated bitch we hear her anyway we heard saying that you was a stripper for 20 years while you told my husband a stripper and that you fuck marry me in and it is what it is so i hope my fuck your husband i do okay boom um nini lens you know i think andy asked Nene about uh why did she say that she sucked tyrone dick I wonder that too, cause I'm not admitting to suck nobody's dick. Okay, you just you should not admit to sucking dick on. You just can't do that. Okay, it's just not proper. But she said that she did it because people kept um, coming at her and you know basically connecting her to Tyrone. So jokingly she said, "Of course I sucked his dick. Of course I was talking." You know, the whole I'm being facetious, funny. Was, of course I sucked his dick. Of course I was talking to him. Of course I was you know running at all these things that they were accusing her of doing. She jokingly said, "Yep, I did it." Mm, yeah. But she was like, why y'all keep trying to connect me to that man? Ain't no goddamn gonna connection. So, when Andy bring up how he talked to Tyrone, and how he Tyrone was saying how Nene was stalking him, um, how Nene was not his type, how she was being very aggressive and flying to Philadelphia on these things. This is my thing about that. You know, Nene said, you know, we can talk to Tyrone when he got jail. Because, until then, what he says has no point and no value. I completely agree. Tyrone is saying what Tyrone needs to say to help Sheree out. He know, let me say negative things about Sheree, I mean about Nene, because that's what Sheree needs. So I'm going to say that she was just, all these things that he's saying is stupid to me. Because I'm like, I don't believe it one bit. I don't. Anybody who, who anyone who has stuff happen in the past and then all of a sudden she was stalking me and my thing about it is nene don't you can tell a person who kind of stalks someone you know what i'm saying nene has never came off as a person who would be running after a man you know what i'm saying not even to be like oh i'm i'm kissing her kissing her ass or whatever that ain't nene's mo it isn't um she, on one level, Nene probably feels as if she's too good to chase after any man. No tea, no shade, but that's how that's that's what Nene would be. Nene wouldn't be talking about you. It's not even believe, believable what you're saying, bro. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, again, he was helping Sheree with her goddamn storyline. Now at this point, Kim and Kenya going back and forth or whatever. You know, Kenya is getting to that ass, letting her because Andy like, well, you know, what's even the issue between y'all two? Kim trying to play like an innocent white woman. Like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why we don't like, I don't know why she doesn't like me. Bitch, because you came at her first. Kenya and Kim's situation did start at the damn Sheree, at Sheree's uh, housewarming party. Um, Was it two seasons ago? One season ago? Whatever like that. And it was because Kenya, as Kenya said, me and Sheree had a competition between our houses. We was always throwing shade back and forth. Kim then inserted herself in it. When I was shading Sheree, but we would shade each other. And from then on, it's been on and popping. You know, Kim acting like she's never said anything negative about Kenya, but you have. Like, you, and then they show footage of Kim saying how Kenya Coochie was taking out her dress. All kind of bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Just stupid things. And I love how Kenya and Cynthia both made it clear. You were always coming for Kenya, even at Nene's white party. Kenya was making every effort to fucking ignore you, bitch. And you kept coming at her, making comments about her and her husband and just her in general. 
when she was purposely ignoring your stupid ass. And again, Kim liked to play the victim. She liked to play as if, I don't know why they don't like me. I don't know what's going on. Bitch, you know. And not only did you know, we can see it because you're on a fucking TV show. Okay? It is recorded. Like, it plays back whenever you say, I didn't say that. Please believe they're going to have footage of you saying that. So, Kim is trying to play innocent as if she is just totally blindsided by the fact that she's on a reality TV show that follows her with cameras. And, you know what I'm saying? I feel like Kenya at the time was throwing the best shade at Kim. Um, letting her know how her husband, she said her husband was her driver, her chauffeur, her wig maker. I said, bitch, the wig maker? Because, again, Corey ain't got no job. But Corey has probably made millions playing in football or who knows, because I don't know. Because sometimes the football players don't get all their money because they don't play all the We don't know what's going on with that. Um, they break up the whole, you know, Kenya, I mean, Kim suggesting her daughter suck dick for John Legend tickets. Like, you put that out there. Even if you're, you was friends with, with Chrissy Teigen, even John Legend said that he found it inappropriate. It, it made him uncomfortable because, again, he don't want nobody think he got white girls out here sucking dick for tickets. And I love how they got her ass about that and how Kenya was like, who would want to be, um like be like Kim? She got baby kids. Her kids are act just like her, which is a bad, she's a bad mom. I said, Kenya was really going in, honey. And the ladies just up there like, you know, just a chuckling. And you saw for a moment, Sheree tried to, like, touch touch Kenya's arm and kind of calm her down. And you seen Kenny say, you know, just stop it, just leave it. Because Sheree, ain't nobody waiting for you to calm nobody down. Because you on the aisle just like Kenya. So you just shut the fuck up on the sidelines. And they let Kenya go. Let her go. Let her go because Kim has been saying bullshit all fucking season and it's just needed. You know, Kim then said, How you know what? I have my own show. They're just jealous. Nene said, And why do you have your own show? And Kim said, What? She's like, Why? You know, why you have your, like, how did you get your own show? Honey, Kim said, I don't know. They just offered me a show. She said, Right, but that don't have nothing to do with, with this show. You know what I'm saying? And you got your own show because no one wanted to film with you. And so they gave you a show. And as they said, her ratings are not that high. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of bullshit shows that be on. I can honestly say I have not watched Charlie for the Party in years. I think when the first season came on, I watched an episode here and there. I remember Sweetie was on there. Um, but I didn't watch much of it at all because, again, I'm not much of a Kim fan. So it was just interesting to think that she thought because she had her own show that made her better than them. No, bitch, they didn't want to film with you. So go ahead and do your own thing. But my thing is, your show ain't even that popular. People, other white people watch Kim. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's who watch Kim. I don't think many black women like Kim because Kim is a fucking racist. And it, you know, what I'm saying? I, I I just can't see it. You know what I'm saying? Um, Kim goes to well, my I made fit our, my thing cashmere because Nene said, you know what I'm saying, bitch. All you have is trying for the party. You don't have no other jobs. No, cashmere made fifteen million dollars last year. They laughed so hard. They said, bitch, 15, so you making as much as Kim Kardashian? And they like, what? That ain't true. Well, no, you know, did that include having to make the money and put it back into the company? All this, all this shit she was making up. This making up shit okay let's just let's just make that clear and even andy was like really it made that much no it didn't it let show me the books show me the numbers where is that i want to add it all up my damn self okay? i want to add up each particular product you girl you lying so yeah we don't care um they asked him about how can she say you know something the kids and husbands are off limits but she always speaking on kenya she spoke on Nene and her husband. She has spoke on um, Candy and Todd. She spoke on has spoken on everyone else. Even Nene seen them. Cause Kim said, "Well, you know, y'all ask me questions about Big Pop or whatever. I've been married to Croy for seven years, and Nene said I've been married to, to, to Greg for twenty. So, bitch, what does that matter? You again keep saying how things are off limit, but you then bring it in. And the thing is, you can't say the kids are off limit and that your daughter's off limit because she's a, a, an adult. Cause they asked her why don't she wrangle in her daughter." Because she's grown, she's an adult, so I can't really do anything, do anything about it. So, if she's grown enough for you not to stop her, then guess what, bitch? When she says something to me, I'm going to say something back to her. And even Nene said that, like, you know what I'm saying? She's not going to keep coming at me and think I won't come back at her. Point like to the period. You know what I'm saying? Um, Kim was just saying, how, you know, they're all just jealous of me. Kenny said, no one is jealous of you. We, we are all successful in our own right. So, no one on here is jealous of you. And everyone agreed. Bitch, they not. Kim 
is racist. <laughs> Kim think they jealous of her because they black and she white. You can't tell me no different. Bitch, we both on we both on reality shows on the same on the same station. We all have our show and our own bitches. Why are we jealous of you? All of them, except for Kenya, has children. Um, they all either been married. You know, so is it, Kim has not done anything that they have not done or they're not doing. So why are they jealous? Because Kim's white and they're black. You can't again. You can't tell me no different. So you know what I'm saying. Then Kim and Nene go back and forth again. You know, we talking about when Kim was saying how Nene looked like she was on drugs and how she was acting off with not herself. And Nene was like, "Bitch, you ain't even seen me and hung out with me in years. You ain't been on the show in five seasons." And then even Andy said, you know, you haven't been around her for all that long. So how do you know her being quiet and just not acting, you know, being extra wasn't just who she was at that point? Like, why does she have to be on drugs? Because she wants to put out that Nene's on drugs. She wants to put out that Nene has roaches. She wants to put out that Nene um, was with a man who was married. She wants to put out that Nene was a stripper. She wants to put out that Nene parks in hand. She wants to put all these things out about Nene. Why? Because Kenya, I mean Kenya, Kim don't like the fact that Nene is a black woman who's successful. That is the gist of it. It really, really is. And even, um, I think Cynthia called Bush. She's like, no, you knew damn well that she was not um, high. Everyone actually called Bush. I think even Candy said, no, you knew she wasn't high. But you said shit just to throw it out there. Even though that kind of accusation is the same way that um, Portia accused Candy of, you know, that stuff or whatever. It's the same thing. If you put out that someone... Um, is on drugs, it can ruin their brand. Kim don't care, but Kim trying to ruin their brand. That's what Kim came to the season to try to do. She tried to ruin everyone in one way or the other. And Kim gonna say, well, I didn't like it when Candy said that I was that I had a drinking problem. Candy said, bitch, you said you have your husband drive you around because whenever you go anywhere, you have to drink. That's a drinking problem, okay? It is. Sheree tried to say, well, I think it's the thing that she's mad because you said it was, it was a drinking problem. Kim said, I said what I said and I ain't changing it. It is what it is. I, Kim, if whenever you go somewhere, if you can't drive yourself because you have to get drunk, you have a drinking problem. Clear as that. You do. Point blank to the period. So I love how Kim said, I said it and I meant it and I ain't taking it back. Fuck you. <laughs> Anyone who looks like you and think I'm saying anything different. It's the truth and it is what it is. And... We then see Candy getting Kim's ass, just saying how, you know what I'm saying, Kim, saying how she wanted to eat her box or whatever. She said how she was mad at Sheree for even not telling her what Kim said, even though she had seen Candy on numerous occasions and never said anything. You know, she said to Kim, you know what I'm saying, um, you sit here, you watch us on the show. Because like we ain't been, none of us been talking to you. So you watch us on the show. You then tried to come on the show and talk shit. Because at one point, Kim said something about, you know, Candy and her man having threesomes. That's nasty. Again, how do you know these things unless you're watching us on the show? Bitch, you a fan. You are a fan. You're a fucking fan. Well, that's, and it's the truth. It is the absolute truth. Whenever you don't know someone, but you can come on the show and say, well, I know A, B, C, and D. It's because as a fan, you were watching the show. As a fan, you knew what was going on. And so you came here with that ammunition to try to get back at somebody. And it all backfired on Kim. And, you know, Kim Cron said, well, I didn't say that. I didn't say this. The bitch is on camera. I didn't tell Sheree that she did that. Here come, the, here come the footage. I didn't show Sheree, you know, footage of Nene. Here come the footage. Everything that she kept saying that she didn't do is showing footage. And I love how Candy didn't let up on her. I love how no one let up. Not Candy, not Nene, not Cynthia, not Por Well, Portia was kind of... Portia was a little bit taken up for uh, for Kim, not even taken up for her, but kind of trying to help her explain shit. I was confused. I'm looking like, but you don't even like him. So that part confused me a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So it was all, you know, going at her, at Kim, but simply because Kim had said something disparaging about all of them all season. So, you know, they then had the whole conversation about roaches being racist and racist issues in general. Kim trying to act as if, Roaches and racism don't go together. You know, that's just stupid. Instead of her trying to listen at what they were saying, she just kind of, uh, whatever. Because Nene, not Nene, Kim, damn it. Candy was playing like, you know, just in general, roaches are equated to being dirty. 
roaches are equated to being in the hood. And if you say it's a black woman, it means like, okay, you dirty, you live in the hood. That it, it, it can be taken in a racist way. Even though white people have roaches too, we know that. But sometimes it's just still geared towards you being a low class, dirty person in the hood. And so you said the word roaches versus bugs. And it wasn't roaches. Anyone who saw the video knew there wasn't a goddamn roach. It was too big to be a roach. It was a goddamn water bug um, that was in the house. And then how she said, well, I didn't show anyone in the video. And here on the video of her saying, she got, look at all these roaches in her house. It's a whole bunch of roaches. And it wasn't roaches. It was damn water bugs. So again, that's why it's racist because the, the bug you picked was a goddamn gone bug that is equated to being ghetto in the hood and being dirty. Bitch, please. Miss with the bullshit. So... You know, even they was asking Sheree, like, you saw the video, you didn't even come and tell anyone about anything. Wait, well, you no, know, why didn't you? I don't have to do that. That ain't my job. Bitch, you either the bone collector or you not. Okay? What is your job title? You said I'm the bone collector, LLC. Well, bitch, do your goddamn job. You can't only deliver certain bones. But again, Sheree got her ass fired for being a fucked up bone collector. That's what she did. And it's all her own fault. Um, Even Nene saying, you know, Brielle is grown, so Brielle was posted. Cause Kim gonna say Brielle posted the video. Someone said, "Do you not see that bug?" She knew the bug was there. She then took it down, but she took it down and then still sent it to Kim. And Andy said, "Well, it looks like you. Why did you keep keep the video for that long?" Well, it was funny. No, bitch, you had things trying to come at people, and you just don't want to admit that now, and you're being taken to task for it. So, um, you know, Kim's not Kim. Nene's not how the door between her and Kim is closed forever, 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 forever. And for the most part, that was the end of the actual reunion. So it was no love lost. We can clearly see that Kenya, Cynthia, Nene, Candy will never, ever, ever want to film with Kim again. We can kind of see that they also done with Sheree because Sheree is a fake ass friend. Sheree only is, is only loyal to Kim, as Cynthia said. She only tells Kim, what is said about Kim, she never tells anyone else what's said um, coming from Kim. So they done with Sheree ass. Um, so everyone walk off. So, you know, we know at this point Sheree ass is fired. So we don't care about that. But Kim is in the bathroom and you hear a producer say, I need Andy in the camera. So I'm like, okay, whatever someone says, I need Andy in a camera. It means some shit finna go down. Kim ass is in the women's bathroom. It's her, Croy, or whatever. Oh my God, Andy, I cannot believe, you know what I'm saying? I, this is what I call white woman tears. Um, and I'm not trying to be racist, but I'm this is the honest guy truth. These are white woman tears. Kim is in that bathroom crying. I can't believe y'all didn't stop them from doing that to me, you know what I'm saying? I was ganged up on. I had these five African American women on me. Why they gotta be black women? They can't so is it worse to be um, checked by five black women than five white women. And my thing with Kim Felder realized is all season she said shit about Kim. I mean, she said shit about Nene. She said shit about Kim. I mean, from, from Candy and about Cynthia and about Portia and about Kenya. So at the reunion, you, Kim, as one sole person said bullshit about all these different women. And so they all, one by one, got in that ass. That ain't got nothing to do with their skin color at all. Because if you was on the Beverly Hills, Housewives or whatever, and you said shit about any of them, it would have still been all women coming at you. So the fact that she said, I had five African American women coming at me and no one stopped it. You know, we see Croy saying, Andy, you know, why did no one say stop? No one stopped Kim from saying shit all season. No one. So what gives Kim the fucking goddamn right to have Andy stop and say, oh my God, guys, those are the Kim. Nah, fuck her. Fuck Kim. Anyone who look like Kim, anybody who support, fuck Kim, Croy, the damn kid, fuck all of them. This was the most racist shit ever. When she said five African-American women all ganged up on me. Do you realize that that's what she said? And then had the audacity to say, they're going to try to pull the race card and say, I'm a racist. You know, race doesn't even exist now. You know, race is all, in, it's all because of social media. Bitch, what? Talking about racism would not exist if it wasn't for social media. Bitch. If that ain't girl, 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 girl. Kim, go have several fucking seats. And bitch, you, we don't like you, Stacey, because we do not like you. Kim, I can't fuck with you or anyone who fucks with you.
Sheree, you are guilty by association. And then when Sheree came in there, she told Sheree, I'm a, I'm so upset with you because you did not defend me. You didn't back me up. You didn't help me out. You was a grown ass woman. And the one thing that I like that Sheree said, even though it was some bullshit, is she said, before you came out there, I said to them, I'm not here to fight nobody else's battles. That to me show how Sheree ain't even loyal to Kim. You know what I'm saying? She not. You you sucked Kim's ass all season. All season. You was so up her. You was up her ass. You didn't tell on her not one goddamn on time. And then in the heat of the night, in the heat of the moment, you couldn't even back her up. You had to say, what I said before, I'm not fighting nobody else's battles. Bitch, what? Look. She then says how, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Andy, you didn't ask me not one positive question. Andy said, Kim. Kim, you didn't have any positive moments this season, boo-boo. Everything that you was in was negative. It was compromising. It was all, just, it wasn't, po you had no positive moments. If you was on a reality show and there were no positive moments, you were the problem. You are the problem. They don't never need to bring Kim back for shit, for nothing. I hope her own show gets canceled. Um, Kim is a racist white woman who wants white woman um, gifts. She wants to not be held accountable. She wants to be able to say this reckless bullshit against whoever, especially black women, and they can't talk back to her about it. She wants her husband to be like, you know, I need you to protect my wife. That's your job, bro. She's at work. She said bullshit, and she got what the fuck she deserved. If you ask me, they should have went hard on her ass. I love how Kim got her ass handed to her by Nene and by Candy, and by Kenya, and by Cynthia. All of them. Fuck her and anyone who looked like her. And I'm done. So, I hope you all enjoyed my review. I am done. Over. Done. Anyway, I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. Peace.